A huge thank you to Cricut for kindly sponsoring today's video. Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today we are jumping into new territory with card making and we're going to be using the new Cricut Joy Extra. I'm gonna show you a really easy card making project and then one that's a little bit more stepped up using the Cricut Joy Extra so you can see how you can advance your card making using it. I'm very much so a Cricut beginner so if I can do this, you guys can too. If you have a Cricut machine, you know it's gonna enhance your card making and if you're looking to get one, I'll leave links down below to the machine and all the supplies I use in today's video. Without further ado, let's jump right into the projects. All right, so first we're gonna go through the process of choosing our design from Design Space, and then we'll move into cutting on the machine and show you how that all works. So I've got Cricut Design Space downloaded on my computer and opened up. All right, so I'm gonna go into their birthday category here. Ooh, and there's some really cool ones here. I like these candles, and I also like, I think I like that cupcake, so I'm gonna do that one. And this one's the more beginner card, so it's gonna be super easy to cut out and create. Okay, then for the finished card size, an R20 is the card size that I usually like to create. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inches, but you get a lot of different options for the card sizes. It also tells you all the tools and materials that you'll need, which is really nice. And I'm gonna go here and press make it. All right, so then it shows how your project is gonna look and cut on the Cricut card mat. That looks great to me. So let me show you how to quickly set up the Cricut Joy Extra card mat. So this is what it looks like inside the packaging. I'll pull this right out. And they've got instructions included in here, so it makes it really easy then. For this card, they recommended cream colored cardstock, but I'm just gonna use white. So I'll take an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock, bring it into my paper trimmer, and we'll cut this down to five and a half inches. This is gonna give us two pieces of cardstock that are the perfect size for this card project. And then to finalize the prep work, I'm gonna go in and bring in my stark white cardstock to the scoring tool. And I'm gonna score it right at four and one fourth inches. This is my favorite scoring board, so I'll link it down below. Score it, and then you wanna flip it and give it a nice fold. All right, so that creates the perfect card base for our project. Okay, so with this card mat, we're gonna remove this protective top sheet that comes along with it. And you'll wanna keep this so that you can store it later and make sure this stays nice and sticky. All right, and then this little piece kinda of comes up like this. This is sort of the cutting mat, and we wanna make sure that we slide it underneath there so that the back side of the card goes underneath that cutting mat area. Press it in there to make sure that it's nice and snug, and it should line up with some of these lines that are on here. So it's the R20 card, so it'll line up with that line there. That's how you know it's perfectly aligned. And then we'll fold this down and press it against that sticky mat. And that is how you prep your card on the Cricut Joy Extra card mat. Super easy to do. All right, then I'll bring up my Cricut Joy Extra and open that right up. And then when it comes to using this card mat, I've seen a couple of videos where people take these little wheels inside of their Cricut and they just move them a little bit off to the side. So those just move really easily. You just wanna make sure that they're off to the side so they kind of roll on this area of the card mat instead of rolling onto your project. So just really easily shifting those. All right, then for materials, I'm gonna press browse all materials. And there's a lot of materials you can choose from here, but I'm using a heavy cardstock. So I'm going to press heavy cardstock and then press done. It's telling me to move the star wheels, which I've already done, so that's perfect. And I'm gonna even press more pressure just because my cardstock is a little bit heavier weight. All right, then it says load tools and materials. So I've already got the blade inside of here ready to go. And I'm going to take the Cricut mat and slowly place it up to the machine, making sure it's nice and aligned. And those wheels are going to grab it and pull it right in. All right, so then all you're gonna do is click go on your project and it'll start cutting out. And then you just get to watch it cut out and it is so satisfying to watch. It's actually really quite quick with all of its cuts that it's making. Right now it's doing all the little confetti pieces that it's cutting out and then it'll probably start working on the cupcake pretty soon. All right, and once it's all done cutting, it's going to unload out of your mat. The screen will say project complete. So we're going to press unload and it'll unload it right out of the machine. And then it also told me to put these star wheels back into place, so I'm just going to line them back up, kind of how I thought they were, in my machine. That should be perfect. And then let's talk about removing this from the mat. So I'm gonna go in using the Cricut Joy tool set, using this little spatula here, and just carefully kind of peel this off of the mat with the spatula. You just wanna be careful when you're starting out to peel it off, just so that you don't really bend anything out of shape. So that'll help start it, and then I can just kind of carefully and gently peel my project off the mat. 
And I'm surprised that only took minutes to cut out. It was quite quick and I used a really sturdy cardstock too. So it took even a little bit longer, but if you use a lighter weight cardstock, it'll go even faster. So just gently peeling this off the mat and then we'll slide it right out of the mat. And that cut out absolutely perfectly. You can see it did a really great job. And then for these excess pieces, like I'm gonna just take this confetti and just scrape it right off the mat carefully. You don't wanna to press too hard when you're doing any of this scraping because you don't want the adhesive to come up. So just gently scrape to remove these pieces off the mat and it's super easy to do that. And I'm gonna leave this cupcake on here for a reason. So I'm just leaving that right on the center there as I scrape all the other pieces right off. But I wanna show you a fun way to use the excess scraps that are on this cupcake as well. So to color these in, I'm gonna go in with some Simon Hurley Create dye ink pads in several different colors. And to blend that ink on, I'm gonna use these little detail blending brushes. These are gonna be great to get into some of those smaller areas and color them in. So starting off with the frosting, I'm gonna do a little bit of yellow, kind of like vanilla frosting. So I'm going in with this over the moon color, which is pretty light, and using this little blending brush to just blend on some color onto the cupcake frosting. And because these are nice and small, it's easy to keep the color where we want it to and not overlap into the other areas, which I really like. So I'll kind of bring it in from both edges, which will make the outside area a little bit darker, and then it'll make this center piece a little bit lighter. It gives it kind of that rounded look. And I'm just doing this right on top of the Cricut sticky mat. If you want to, you could take those pieces off of the sticky mat, but I'll show you how to clean it in just a second. It's pretty easy to clean this ink off. And what I like about these inks is that they react with water and it's not going to stain our mat or ruin it or anything. So that's why I'm using the Simon Hurley inks for this. For that little flame up top, I'm gonna to go in using a little bit of Guppy and that same sort of yellowish blending brush and just add that to the flame. It'll give it a nice color. All right, then I'm going in with a little brown blending brush and I'm going to use Gur, which is this mid-tone brown color. I named them after my dog, actually. And I'm just going to bring this color in at the bottom because I want a chocolate cupcake, but of course, make it whatever flavor you want and sort of have fun with this. And I'm just going to gently bring that up to the top and starting at the bottom so that I get the darkest color down there. It'll give it some nice shading and depth to the cupcake. All right, I'm loving how this is starting to look. And then for the candle, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of Clear Skies, which is this kind of blue ink color. And I'll just go in and gently add a little bit of color to that candle as well. That looks perfect. Okay, so now here's the fun part about this. I'm going to take the card that we cut out and I'm going to take another piece of my white cardstock going to slip this right inside of the card, line it up how I want, and then close the card right on the front here. Then I'll just grab a little bit of masking tape and I'm going to tape this card closed and down onto my surface. So there's now a piece of cardstock in there and we're sort of using this card as a guide for now. All right, then I'm just gonna go in using a little bit of liquid glue and place some liquid glue down into these opening areas. So just add some right down. A little bit goes a long way with this. All right, then I'm gonna use my little spatula tool again and start getting some of these little pieces to be looser. And then I'll just place them right into this opening. So super easy to do. And to just stick these in like a puzzle through those cutout openings. I love how this is looking already. And it's really quick and easy to do since we've got that kind of card that we cut out as a guide to line these little cupcake pieces in there. And I just do each little section at a time. So now we'll move up into this candle. We need even less glue up here. So just add a little bit to each opening. And then we'll go in with our little Cricut spatula again to get these little pieces loose. And this is why I kind of left them on here because we can gently get them loose, but we still have an idea as to what the order is. Whereas if you get them all loose at one time, you're gonna kind of have a hard time finding out where they go. And then I can just easily Slot these right into place. Okay, and then last but not least, we'll go in and do our little chocolate cupcake at the bottom just by putting little lines of glue into each one of those openings. And we'll get these little pieces loose. And again, start just filling it in. And if you want to, you could even do like one piece at a time, especially for these, because they all look a little bit similar. So this will just make sure I know exactly where each piece is gonna go. And we'll just press all those down to make sure they're nice and adhered. I wanna show how to clean this mat off because we've now got all the pieces off of it. So I'm ready to clean it so that it's ready for the next use. So to clean this mat, since I used a little bit of ink on it, I'm just gonna go in with a slight amount of water, nothing else, and then just a paper towel or a lint-free cloth and just really gently wipe this off. 
no scrubbing involved, just super gentle with using a little bit of paper towel to get any of the excess ink off. Now I used ink that's really easy to clean up. So it was one swipe and that ink came off super easily. You don't wanna use paint or anything like that because that'll make your mat unsticky for the next use. So if you wanna color it in with something other than what I used, definitely peel it off the mat first and then do the coloring. You could also color it with markers and just stay inside the lines on those and that would be perfect too. Once the water evaporates, your mat is really super sticky and ready to go for the next project. And to keep it nice and sticky, I'm gonna go back in with this little sheet that was covering it at the beginning and I'm just going to place it right down over top of the mat, and that's going to make sure that no dust gets on it for the next time we want to use it. All right, now to unveil my project, here is what that inner card looks like that we created using the cupcake. I love how that looks. It is so adorable, and I love that we're able to use the excess pieces that we cut out to create this really fun greeting card. So we get kind of a two for one here, because now I can remove my tape off of this project, and this is going to become a card as well. So for this one, I'm gonna use one of the Cricut Joy insert cards. I love these, you can buy a couple different packs of them. There's lots of different colored cardstock options. There's some more specialty ones. I really like this sort of uh, glittery one and shiny one that's inside of here too. These are four inches by five and one fourth inches. So you could cut one of your own or create your own types of cardstocks to fit behind the card as well. But I did wanna show you these because I know it makes it super easy if you're on a time crunch. So it's got cards, card inserts, and envelopes inside of here. So the shiny ones are the card inserts and then it's got different card colors so these are really nice card socks they're kind of textured you've got green blue and red if you want to do colored and then some envelopes inside of here as well I'm really into the shine here so I'm gonna go with this shiny piece to match the white card stock that we've already used and there's a little slit on all four sides so all you need to do with this is bring it onto the inside here and just easily tuck it right into those little slits and then we'll do it on this side too and it's super easy to just tuck those guys in and then you get yourself a really simple and beautiful birthday card. I love the shine and kind of holographic look to that card stock. It pairs along perfectly with this birthday card. Now because there's no glue in here, you actually have this kind of raised look to the card stock. It kind of sticks up a little bit, which I happen to really like actually. It gives it a little bit more dimension, but if you want to, you could also add a little bit of glue behind this before you tuck it in, and then it would be stuck right down to your card like this. But I'm gonna leave it like this. I like that dimension. Now I wanna create a really great personalized note for the inside of this card. I don't love my handwriting though, so we're gonna create it using the Cricut Joy Extra. So going back onto my computer, I'll press new. Then I'm gonna go in here and choose a font. There's tons of fonts in the Cricut design space you can use, and you can also upload your own too, which is really cool. I want something just pretty simple, and each one is gonna tell you like what it can do too. So this Cricut Sans looks pretty simple. It looks like the perfect font for me, and it's single layer and writing, so it can be used with the pen tool, which is awesome. So I'm going to select that, then I'll go into text, and I'm just going to write a really simple message. So I'll write, hi friend, I hope you have an amazing birthday. So excited to celebrate with you. Just something simple for the inside of the card and of course you can make it as personalized as you want to. So I'm going to shrink down this font so that it fits perfectly onto that size panel that we did. And then I'm going to click on this font and when it says operation up here, I'm going to select draw and pen. And this will make the font look a little bit different. So it'll kind of do like outlined bubble letters, which I think is gonna look great for this project. So then we'll press make. I'm going to do on mat, press confirm. All right, and then here we have the option to center it how we would like on our piece of cardstock. I think that's gonna be perfect. I'll press continue. All right, and for this project, I'm gonna use the regular Cricut Joy Extra Light Grip Mat. I'll peel off the backing. And the reason why I'm using this one is because I'm not using a folded card this time. And so I can just line this up right onto that mat, right in the corner there. Make sure it's nice and pressed down. That's perfect. I'll pick my material, which is that heavy cardstock, and then let's load the Cricut Joy Extra. So we'll open it up here, and then we'll take that mat and place it right into our machine. It's going to load it in there really nice and easily. and then we're able to choose what type of pen we want to use. There's lots of different colors and options. I think I'm gonna use these 0.3 black pens for today's project. All right, so I'll just unclamp that blade that's inside of there and we'll remove that right out of the machine. And then we'll take our black pen, uncap it. I'm just gonna put the cap on top so I don't lose it and we'll drop it right into our machine and clamp that little guy closed. Okay, then we'll go back to our laptop and click go and then it's going to start our drawing. I'm super excited to see this, how the pen works inside of the machine. Ooh, that is super satisfying to watch. 
I love it. So it's writing out our personalized message, which is really awesome. And I love this because you can make it any type of sentiment. You can write on the inside of your cards, or if you have like a really specialized inside joke or sentiment that you might not find with a stamp, you could easily draw it out like this. And then it's complete, so we can press unload. And it'll unload it right out of our machine. And I mean, check out how cool that is. Like I said, so much better than my own handwriting. I like how large it is too. You really couldn't achieve that size with a stamp. And again, you can personalize it. So if you wanna put their name there, if you wanna put your name at the end, it really is so easy to customize whatever you want it to say. Then I can unclamp the pen right out of here. We'll cap that back off and place it to the side. And we can place our blade right back in for the next time we wanna use it. Now let's remove it off the cutting mat to make this super easy. I just like to bend my mat like this, and that's going to make it super easy to peel off and not have your cardstock be bent, right? So it doesn't warp at all. And then we're able to take our plastic piece and cover up the mat for the next time we wanna use it and that'll ensure that no dust gets on it and it stays nice and sticky. And then we're able to super easily just open up our card and we will adhere this right to the inside here. So just place it right down and adhere it into place. And how cool is that? We have a beautiful card on the outside that was super quick and easy to make just by cutting it out. And then of course your recipient's gonna open it up and see your amazing written message that's completely customized to them, which is so cool. Now, of course, we got this more stepped up version that we colored in, and you could just finish the card off like this if you want to, but I'm gonna go in and cut right around this really quickly because I wanna add this cupcake to a different color background. So I'll just go in really easily with my scissors and just cut right around this image, leaving a little bit of a white border all the way around it. This part isn't too difficult. It's a pretty easy image to just fussy cut right around, and leaving that little bit of a white border also helps that you don't have to get into some of those details. All right, for the background of that cupcake card, I'm going to go in using a stencil. This one is called Tiny Diamonds, and I think it's gonna look like confetti in the background, which is so much fun. So I'm just going to lay this right down over top of the project, and I'll go in with just a bit of masking tape to hold this down while we do our stenciling. For the color and texture, I'm gonna go in with a lunar paste in the color Clear Skies. This is a really beautiful texture paste, and it's going to give me this rich and creamy metallic look through the stencil. So I'm going to go in with a palette knife and just add lots of this paste down at the bottom of the card background. So just add quite a bit. And then I'll go in with my paste scraper tool and I'm just going to take that paste that's at the bottom there and scrape it all throughout that background. So there's lots of extra here. You're just going to want to tilt this at kind of a downward angle like this to apply more of that paste down and spread it out. And keep spreading that until we get to the top of the card. Now once it's all over the card, you're then gonna go at more of an upward angle like this to just scrape up any of the excess, smooth it out, and give it a nice even layer of that paste. And the reason why I added a lot more than I needed at the bottom is because it makes it a lot easier. And then you can take your palette knife and just scrape off any of the excess and put it right back into the jar so there's absolutely no waste when you're creating with this lunar paste. All right, then we'll peel off the stencil and reveal that background. Look how crisp those edges are. It makes such a beautiful design. So I'm bringing in my little spatula tool to help pick this up and we'll set it off to the side to give it some time to dry. You wanna let that dry for about 30 minutes. It just depends on your climate and how thick you applied the paste down onto your project. But before I do anything else, I wanna clean off my craft sheet. So when I'm working with this paste, before it dries, you can spray it down with some water, which is gonna help clean this up really nice and easily. So I'll wipe it off of my protected work surface and I'll also wipe it off of the stencil. You wanna do this before it dries. And the awesome part about Lunar Paste is that it's heat stable. So I'm gonna go in and use a heat tool to help set this into place and help speed along the drying process because I'm a little bit impatient. And I mean, check out how gorgeous that is once it's completely dry. It looks so beautiful and metallic and it really brings so much life to that background. I love how that shiny color looks. All right, so I'm gonna use a little bit more liquid glue to glue this down onto a card base. And I love liquid glue because it gives me the ability to place it down and if I need to, I have a couple seconds to move it around and make sure that it's perfectly centered and aligned before I fully commit. All right, that looks perfect. And then I'll use a little bit of foam adhesive and add that to the back. So we'll line that up and place it right down onto the center of the card. You can see that gives it a nice dimension and pops it off. 
And then if you want to, you can add more of a personalized sentiment or a handwritten note using the Cricut Joy Extra. But I want something more generic, so I'm gonna go into the Birthday Basics stamp set, and I'm gonna use the sentiment that says Wish Big, which I think goes along perfectly with this cupcake. So I'll peel this right out, pick it up with an acrylic block, and I'll stamp this down using some brown pine cone VersaFine Claire ink, and this is going to match that chocolate color that's on the cupcake really nicely. So I'll just stamp that down, giving it some good pressure. And then to seal that pigment ink into place and give it a little bit of shine, I'll throw over a layer of clear heat embossing powder, tap off the excess, and heat that until it's clear and shiny. And check that out, that embossing powder gives it a really nice finished shine. All right, and then I've added some foam tape on the back of that sentiment, and I'm gonna place it in this top right corner. So I'll line it up and place it down. And that finishes off this beautiful card that we created. I love that shiny background that we created using that lunar paste and the stencil and that we were able to create this cupcake out of the remnants of the other card. It's super cool that it gives kind of a two for one look and you can really create a lot with just one cutout from the Cricut. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me for today's video. It was super awesome to run through the Cricut Joy Extra and show you all about how to create some really fun and easy birthday cards with it. This can really seamlessly integrate into your making sessions, especially for things that are super custom, if you want to tailor them to whoever you're sending the card to, which I think can really bring a card to the next level and make it feel incredibly personal. I'll have links down below to everything that I used in today's video, and using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. And leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think of this, and if you have a Cricut at home and how you love to craft with it too. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a great day, bye.